Hey guys, welcome back. Thanks for joining me for episode 13 on the Alienist Crafts channel. This channel I focus predominantly on knitting and crocheting um, projects and experiences and I share my, any kind of information I feel like sharing with you on those. Um, I do throw in a little bit of cross stitch every now and then and this time I have some sewing to share with you as well. Um, so do stay tuned. First up I'm going to share with you information on um, a knit along or crochet along that I have opened up in my Ravelry thread. This is called the Winter Warmers Cow Cow and um, it will run, well it started on the 20th of October and it will run until the 28th of February. Um, I'd just like to see what you are working on for the winter months, um, just small items. So um, I've listed in the Ravelry group all the rules and information there, but essentially um, for winter warmers, I'm looking at things such as hats, scarves, gloves, mittens, you know, smaller type of projects that you can get through pretty quickly and that are to keep you warm over the winter months. So do check out that cow cow over in the Ravelry group, LNS Crafts. I will um, show up on the screen either along here or along the bottom. Um, where you can find me um, on Instagram, Ravelry and obviously YouTube um, so do take note of that information um, I also like to try and do show notes in the description box below and also in the Ravelry group so do check out all the information about what I'm talking about today it will be in the box below or on the Ravelry groups page um, for the video so do check that out so that's that done so don't forget the winter warmer cow cow um, I am going to move straight into whips not whips fi um, finished objects because I have quite a lot of those so here we go so in my last video I shared with you some gloves that I was working on the topless mittens which I've kind of um, used my own recipe I did actually say I was going to provide a copy of that recipe I don't know what I've done with it now um, but I haven't had it tested it or anything like that so it's not quite in final form it is pretty pretty straightforward so anyway I managed to finish up these mittens <laughs> like that they're topless mittens I'm calling them and this these I'm calling day at the races because this yarn here is day at the races by oh, what is the name owl about yarn just trying to pull it up here owl about yarn cuddly owl sock yarn um, day at the races and that's um, from an Etsy shop and this this yarn here the grey is a Woolly Mama's yarn Woolly Mama yarns yarn in the colour charcoal so it's quite plain um, I was trying to find some mittens that I could wear basically because I'm not fond of mittens um, because I like to be able to use my phone and stuff and I didn't want to knit gloves so I kind of went halfway and I did um, topless mittens I call them um, so that is what they look like, the finished product. I showed these in my last podcast, my last video, and they weren't um, finished, but I've now managed to finish them, and I'm really pleased with these. I haven't worn them yet, because um, I wasn't sure if I was going to gift them to somebody else or make myself another more girly-looking pair, but I'm really pleased with the way they fit. They fit nicely around the thumbs, and I've got a rib across there, and basically the reason I started... Um, to do the topless mittens was because I wanted to finish up the sock yarn that I had left and there wasn't a lot of it in this colour so I just wanted to use it up and I figured I'd just do two tone mittens with that and that was just the job, it worked out perfectly. Um, so that's my first finished object that I have to share with you. Next up I have, oh did I show you, yes I showed you that, um, I've got a huge box here of things that I want to share with you so bear with me while I kind of rummage through. First thing, I've been getting into crocheting again and I decided to use up more sock yarn again and because I didn't have lots of it left, I had like tiny little balls like that size left of the sock yarn so I thought let me do a bit of mix and matching so I made a, a mobile phone cosy and I think I left my phone somewhere else so that is a mobile phone cosy that I made off the top of my head basically I just thought I would play around with some crocheting and the yarns that I had left over and see how I got on so this is my daughter's phone and um, see 
fits in there quite nicely. I didn't do a loop over the top with the button. I've seen lots of people do the button ones and I just figured it's just too fiddly when you want to get it out quickly to use it. You want to just be able to slide it out. So um, I made that that kind of size. It's just basic single, single crochet. I think, what do we call it? I think UK single and sorry not UK US single crochet UK double crochet this that's all it is all the way um, nothing extra special or fancy about it the only thing was that I used different yarns so I've got here this is you spin me round by craft house magic um, the next one is West Yorkshire spinners wood pigeon yarn and then the top one I'm not quite sure what one that is I think that may be the remnants of a what's it Felici yarn, I think. And I just used that to top it off. And that's it. And it fits her phone pretty nicely. Uh, she's got one of the older phones. So yeah, so that's that one. And I used a US two and a half or three millimeter hook for that. Then I went on to make another one with some more leftover yarn I have here and I decided that I was going to just do try um, doing a coloured yarn and then a cream so alternating between, between the colour and the cream sorry not colour, double stranded that's what I did it was a double stranded um, crochet and I used a 4mm hook for this which is a G and this is larger because I wanted it for my phone so hers fits nicely in there or is her one larger actually this this fits a bit more it actually fits nicely because it's it feels thicker because I've used two strands of yarn for this I guess so anyway so the yarn I used was um, oh that's coming up with lots of different yarns so I've got a woolly mama yarns here in sundown soon which is the bottom color then I moved on to finish up the felt fusion yarn in the color alpine mixed with the cream and then I went on to finish up with a berger de france calineux yarn in the color cobalt so that is that and again it's the same stitch pattern so it's single um, US single crochet UK double crochet all the way and that was it and then just bind off so yeah two mobile phone cozies I managed to make with the leftover bits of yarn and it wasn't a lot so I had three eight just over eight grams of yarn for one cozy and um, for the other one how much did I use for that one for this one I didn't actually do the measurements for that but for this one it was about eight, just over 8 grams of yarn just to finish this up so it was a good kind of stash buster and I'm quite pleased with those those can actually um, either go to my daughter or one of them can and the other one I, I might keep or I might just gift it again um, but yeah I don't, I've got two cosies so I'm pleased with that and then I've been making quite a lot of things. I've finished up quite a few. I've started lots of new things and I've finished them up because I'm doing smaller items. Um, I thought I would get on and do some, like I said, in, for the cow, winter warmer things um, that I can give as gifts at Christmas time. And so I've been doing quite a lot of smaller things. And the first smallish kind of thing I did was the Sundown Soon Sockhead hat. So. I think I've showed you the sock head hat pattern before. It's a free pattern on Ravelry by Kelly McClure. That's what it looks like. It's meant to be a slouchy style, but um, I prefer to do it in a kind of a beanie style. So this is the hat I've done. It's The colourway is Sundown Soon by Woolly Mama Yarns, and it's beautiful the way it turns out. It's, it's like, wow sunset kind of colours and I love the swirl at the top there this is going to be a gift and I've made it in a I think the sock head hat only comes in adult size and it's for finger and weight yarn yeah it's only adult medium size and um, 
like I said, I'm not a fan of a huge fan of slouchy hats, so I like to make it so it's more beanie style. So I'll quickly try this on. I haven't actually put my label on this yet. So this I've got a bit of a bun going on at the top there, so it looks a bit odd, but this is how it fits. It's a snug fit, and this is for somebody else who has a smaller head than me, less hair, so it should fit perfectly. But I really like how the sock head hat works up and as a result I've done quite a few of them. So this is the first one and I used US size 2s and 3s, the 2 for the for the rib and 3 for the main body of the hat. So the 2 is 2.75mm and the US 3 is 3.25mm for this particular hat. The decreases are really nice, I really liked doing that. I think it was um, a 12 point decrease. It was, it's, there's quite a lot, if you can see there you decrease all the way around and it's just really nice and neat and, and easy and practical and, and I really enjoyed making that and it was a quick knit. I managed to do this in two days so that's how quick it is um, if you have the time. It takes a few few hours I'd say um, to get through it because it's um, fingering weight or four ply but it's, it's worth it. It's worth it. It's a lightweight fabric so I guess it's not for this kind of weight, it's not a, a thick, warm, fuzzy kind of feeling hat, but it's a cover your head kind of hat and just keep a little bit of a chill away, keep the wind away kind of hat. And um, I really like that. I like that it's lightweight. So I've done that one. Then with the same pattern, I've done um, a variation. I've done uh, one, two, three more hats. So I've done, let's see, the Jamboree sock head hat. I did the decreases different on this one. So the yarn is Felici yarn in the colour Jamboree, hence the name. And this is um, four ply yarn or fingering weight yarn. And again, like I said, I don't, none of the sock head hats that I do are the slouchy style hats. I like to do them so that they're going to be beanie style. So this is meant for a child which um, was 120 stitches I did for this one. I did the decreases slightly different. Um, so my kind of hack was to do less. You can see the pattern there. I did less. Um, I decreased in less places. I think on the sock head you do something like 12 different places or 16 or something like that. This one I did a lot less. Um, going around. If you want information on how I did the decreases then check out my Ravelry page, project page for this particular hat. It's not, it didn't work out the way I wanted it particularly because it's got more of a kind of a cone shape there as opposed to the rounded shape from the original pattern. So you can see this is more rounded the way the decreases worked out. So um, the next hat I did I've made an adjustment. I didn't want to undo this because I thought it will still serve as a hat. It's just a little bit more pointed the way I did the decreases on this one because um, I kind of made it up as I went along. But it still serves as a hat. It looks really nice and I think I used 2.75 millimeters for the whole hat so I didn't change the the needles for the rib on this one. I did the same, used the same needles all the way up and um, I'm lazy so I used, um, what do you call them, circular needles all the way. I didn't move to DPNs because I, I really I get frustrated with DPNs and sometimes it's difficult to travel with them and I like to travel with my knits, my smaller knits so I can you know get things moving along and so with this one yeah this was kind of like a little practice um, to see if I could do the decreases in a slightly different way um, and it's it needed a bit of improvement so then I moved on to do the sock head, sock head, even in another colourway. So this is my introvert sock head hat. This one is um, done on 2.75 millimetre needles for the cuff, the rib, and 3.25 millimetres for the main body. So that's a US three and a US two. And this again is a child size hat. For the yarn, I've used my Biff Sugar Yarns for the main body of the hat in the colour Introvert, which is beautiful. It's a hand dyed yarn on Etsy. You can see the decreases there. And then I used Berry Lips, um, which is a Woolly Mama Yarns. 
colorway and yeah that's available on Etsy as well so I think it looks like I did the original decreases for this one to be fair because there we are it's very rounded yeah it looks like I did the original number of decreases for this one because I've got quite a lot if you can see there um, let's see which one came first yeah I did this one before I did this one and then so I'm pleased with those two sock head hats then before those I did this sock head hat and the reason I've left this till last is because I've done socks to match it so the yarn is called purple green by um, Garn Studio or Drops and it's the Drops Delight colourway, beautiful colourway, uh, green print, purple green print it's called, number 14, and um, I've done a child size again, 120 stitches, and I've used US 3.25mm needles for the whole hat, and this is very rounded, pretty, pretty pleased with that, did I use, looks like, mm, I may have slightly, let's see, what did I do for this one? I'm not sure if I made any variations for this. Let me just quickly check the Ravelry page. 2x2 um, two two rib, 5.75 before decreases. No, I didn't make any amendments to the decreasing by the look of this. I've done the same decreasing as for the normal sock head hat. So that is, those are the decreases. I really love the print on this. I think it's really pretty, um, or cool, because it's for a boy. And um, I've done socks to go with it. I had enough yarn to do the socks and the hat which is pretty neat and the socks I've just done a basic cuff down sock um, in the same yarn with a heel flap and gusset type heel so I'm really pleased with the way these are turned out and I hope that he likes them so like I said I've been doing lots those are all the sock head style hats I've done I've done one more hat uh, let's see, no, I've done quite a few, I've done a couple more hats, I'm crazy on hats at the moment, I've done this hat, so this one is a new one to me, this hat is called Twiggy by YYC Knits, and I had so much trouble with this, because I think because my mindset is I just want to do something quick and easy and mindless and not have to think about it too much, and um, I thought, right, I will try the, the Berger yarn, which is the cobalt colour, which is this lovely green yarn. It's got a kind of a silky look about it. Um, and I thought I'd try the Twiggy pattern. It's a free pattern on Ravelry. I don't think I have... Oh, yeah, here's the pattern. There's the pattern. Um, it looks really nice. I looked at all the projects on um, Ravelry before I decided to start the project, and I thought... That seems easy enough. It was something that kind of caught my eye because of the pattern on it. I hadn't done a patterned hat. And these are faux cable um, patterns. This is a false cable style pattern um, hat. And I'm not sure if you'll be able to tell, but I can see that I've made so many mistakes on this hat. I had so much trouble with it. Everybody that has worked on the hat seems to... I think that it was a really easy knit. I seem to really struggle. Um, what happened, let me just explain. I'm using 2.75 millimeter needles for the cuff and the body of the hat. Um, the cuff is a slightly different rib, which I really like. I think it was twisted rib, double twisted rib, I would call it, at the bottom there, um, which is really nice and different. So I may try that on some other things. Um, but the pattern, it just threw me. So I think I did the decreases came out really nicely. I love the way the decreases worked out and I managed to get that right. But the pattern, oh my gosh, everything was off sync. It's not in line as it's supposed to be. And I continued with it. And then I just thought, I got to a point where I was just like, I just want this to be over. I just want to finish the hat now. I'm not going to go back and rip it back anymore. I'm just going to finish the hat. And that's that. I'm not, <clears throat> I just can't, I can't be doing this anymore. And I got really fed up with it. And so I just, I kept putting it down and coming back um, to kind of get my mindset right. 
and it just wasn't happening for me and I, I couldn't wait to get to the decreases and I managed to do the decreases I mean I think the decreases just look absolutely perfect um, I'm so pleased that the decreases came out right even if the rest of the hat didn't but so the problem I had I think if I'd have used um, my stitch markers to mark the pattern repeats when I began the project I would have been a lot better off what I was doing was just doing the stitch repeats from um, the top of my head from memory basically so I would I'd read the pattern I had the pattern in front of me I'm reading the pattern I'm doing the knitting doing the stitch repeats and I'm not kind of taking a note of where they line up because I, I just couldn't quite get my head around how they were meant to line up um, the little chevrons how they were supposed to line up it didn't kind of occur to me that hey it's going to line up in the same place each time I don't know why that didn't occur to me for some reason my brain just was not telling me oh Lorraine look you need to do your decrease at this point or you need to do your start your cable at this particular stitch so that means something's wrong somewhere else my mind just just my brain just wasn't feeding me the information for this hat so I, I really don't know what went wrong but at some point I decided, oh, stitch markers would be a good idea, Lorraine. So I decided to get out my stitch markers I'm, and I marked the pattern repeats. But by that time it was like, I was literally up here. It was way too late. And for some reason, I still managed to make a mistake, even with the stitch markers. So I really don't know what went wrong. Um, I'm pleased that the hat is done. It looks good, um, I think. I think if you're not, if you don't know what the pattern is supposed to look like, it's, it looks fine. I don't think a non-knitter is really going to care too much about the pattern. I think they're going to love the way that it looks and it's going to be nice and warm. And um, and it's an adult hat and it fits. So let me just quickly show you how this one fits. Again, it's kind of a beanie style. Excuse my label there. It's kind of a beanie style hat. And it fit, this one fits actually a lot better than the orange one, doesn't it? Because um, it's bigger. But yeah, I'm, I like the way it fits. It's perfect shape and perfect size. I just need to work on the pattern repeats. So I think at some stage I'm going to go back to the pattern and try it again and start off with the stitch markers and concentrate on where things are lining up because you can see that's all the way over here, that's there, this is a bit further in, that's a bit further in, that's a bit further in, nothing is just, nothing is lining up the way it's supposed to and it's only when I kind of started to look at other people's project pages and realise, oh hang on a second, it's not meant to be moving, it's not a moving pattern, it's supposed to be static um, and yours aren't lining up Lorraine, everybody else's pattern is lining up and everyone seems to find it so easy so I don't know what it is that, that was just getting me but anyway that's that hat um, so those are the hats I've done another hat which is a pattern I'm working on uh, I'm not sure whether I want to show you because I've not I have to get it test knit and um, once it's test knit then I will share it on the podcast on the, the channel um, but I've used what have I used let's see I've used some yarn that I had left over from another project, let's leave it at that. When I'm in a position to share with you the pattern and um, then then I will show you on the on the video. I've made two of these hats. So I've got a red and a pink, basically. And um, I've been knitting like crazy. I'm trying to use up leftover yarn. So next up is my attempt to use up some more leftover yarn is some mittens. I've done the world famous world simplest mittens by Tin Can Knits, which is a free pattern on Ravelry. Again, I don't think I have that one to hand. Um, what's that one? No, that's my own pattern. I don't think I have it to hand. But it's the simplest world's simplest mittens by Tin Can Knits, which is a free pattern on Ravelry, and it comes in multiple sizes. And um, this is what my mittens look like. My friend wanted a pair of mittens for her baby, which is my godson, and um, she wanted some stringy ones, so I have just done an eye cord to um, attach to them. So the, the pattern actually doesn't have an eye cord, it just has the mittens themselves, and it's a very easy, straightforward pattern, and I will show you. It looks like this, basically, when it's done. 
that's the way the pattern looks but I rolled up the cuff just to kind of because it's a bit long I think and that's that this size is supposed to be toddler size but they look quite big to me um, and it may be um, my gauge I'm not sure I can't remember if, if I got the needle size wrong but I used 3.25 millimeters for the rib and then 3.75 millimeters for the body of the mitts which is US 3 and a US 5 and the yarn I've used is Stylecraft Bambino double knitting yarn in the color sage which is this lovely green and I'd previously knitted a hat in this so I decided to knit the mittens in the same yarn so he can have the two together and um, it's pretty easy the decreases are pretty very much like sock decreases and then um, the thumbs slightly different very easy pattern to follow check out my Ravelry page if you're interested in working that one off the back of that I've done a couple more mittens um, again to just use up some yarn so I've done how come this is not on there this is supposed to be on my page that's interesting so I've done these which are smaller this again is the toddler size so I did something wrong with this one because these have come out a lot bigger than this one and yet it's the same pattern so I think maybe I'll use the wrong needle size for that one or I put the wrong length and I've just used up leftover yarn again this is sweet dreams in what is the colorway the yarn is uh, Serdar number one Serdar number one yarn that I had left over so I've used the sweet dreams colorway for the cuffs and then I've finished off with the rosebud colorway up here um, because that's what I had left over I think I've finished that yarn now so not sure where these are going but I thought I would use up some yarn for these and I've also done purple ones in a larger size for a child these are a child size not toddler and yeah they look okay to me hopefully the thumbs are big enough they look a little bit small now now that I'm looking at them how much bigger is yeah it's slightly bigger but yeah anyway so that one yeah see that's supposed to be toddler um, these ones I used I don't actually say what needle size I use must be the, the recommended needle size but I've used the Sweet Dreams yarn which is Serdar number one which is that colour there to finish to make these and um, pretty pleased with these these will go with a hat that I made earlier um, for a child so yeah so those are my mittens um, that's that's the mitten stash I've got some more to show you I have been going crazy with my knitting so the last um, thing I have to share with you is the little Isla cardigan I was working on this last time round and I've managed to finish it so this is what it looks like this is for my daughter it's an age 12 I made it slightly bigger for her because I want her to have a little bit of um, room to, to maneuver to grow into it and I what drew me to this was the pattern here it is so pretty such a pretty pattern I showed the pattern on my last video so um, check that out if you want more information or go and check out the uh, project page on Ravelry so for this I used the Garn Studio Drops Merino Extra Fine yarn in the colour light greyish green which is number 15. I haven't sewn the buttons on yet because um, my daughter wants to choose the buttons to go on it and um, I used, what did I use? It must be about nine skeins of yarn for this so a lot more than I expected um, but it, it's worth it and I love the way it turned out. It's a very easy knit because most of the pattern, all the pattern is up here um, which is great, it's a top down cardigan as well by the way I forgot to mention that, so all the patterning is in the top bit I managed to make mistakes on this bit umpteen times when I first started and I had to keep going back and changing it um, I came, I did it a number of times and I think what I did wrong was I was reading the pattern wrong so it had like um, yarn over SSK times two and I was doing 
certain bits of it were in brackets and certain bits were not and the bits that are in brackets are the bits to be repeated but not the bits outside of the brackets and I was repeating everything not just the bracketed section um, if you read my notes on the Ravelry project page you'll understand what I'm talking about I made a mistake in reading the pattern which is it, that's normal for me and so I kept getting the pattern wrong once I figured out that that was where I was going wrong it came out fine and I really like the pattern there lovely lace pattern on the back and the front and then that's the only bit that's got the pattern so the rest of it is just a straightforward knit so it's a quite an easy knit you can do this in front of the TV which I did a lot of the time when I wanted to just do mindless knitting and it came out it fits her lovely and all I need to do now is stick the buttons on um, but like I said I need to go with her to find the buttons what I did find was that I always make a mistake with the um, the button band and I had some it's always kind of a little bit lower when I've picked up the stitches and joined it so what I did with the end of the yarn that was from remaining from this band here I decided to just do a row of single crochets across the top and then tucked it in so it kind of looks a little bit more level and a little bit neater and you can probably tell that those are single crochets or slip stitches were they slip stitches? no they're single crochets yeah that's a US single UK double crochets you can see that in the stitch in there so I've done that across the top just to kind of neaten it up a bit and I think I may have done that on did I do it on the bottom? yeah I did the bottom as well because the bottom was not as neat as I wanted it to be so I've done a row of single crochets across there as well to use up the yarn that was hanging from there. So that is the cardigan, Little Isla, which I'm really pleased with, my daughter likes. And that is one of my biggest, well, one of my bigger projects that is um, all completed. The one thing I found with this actually is that where it's all knit in the round and it's top down, there's no kind of seem to hide the um, ends of the yarns in and so for example one end finished right there you can see that so I've woven it in there and you can I'm not sure if you can you can probably see it on the back slightly but how do you guys get around where to weave in your ends if you don't have seams do you kind of well is that another one where do you weave in your end if you don't have seams um, to make them less visible? Mine's right in the middle of the back. Even if I did it on the side, you would see it because there's no seam on the cardigan. Let me know in the comment section below what you do about your seams and how you weave them in, how you weave them in when you don't have um, seams on your items. Anyway, so I think the last thing I have to share with you, the last finished object, and I know this section has gone on for quite a while, the last finished object I have is one I just completed um, this morning and that is this loveliness behind me so this is what I'm calling my little petunia baby blanket this one I have um, I put out on Instagram a question as to what patterns people suggest for doing a baby blanket because I wasn't sure I bought this yarn which is the baby Bur Burnat baby blanket yarn in the colorway little petunias and it was an 800 eight not 800 300 gram ball of yarn which was massive and it is like a chenille type feel to it and um i've got a string hanging because i've only just finished it basically anyway so um i put out a question on instagram as to what pattern to use and in the end i just went with a um double crochet blanket all the way um you can not sure if you can see see that with this type of yarn you can't actually see the stitch definition so um, I wanted a blanket that didn't have any holes in it because it's for a baby and I wanted it to keep baby warm whether they use it for um, a cot or a push chair blanket pram blanket or whatever they use it for I wanted it to be a solid kind of blanket so I've done it in double crochet all the way and I started with, I chained 61 stitches and worked up, um, which ended up with 60 stitches across. 
Um, I don't know how many rows that way I did, maybe I should have taken count, but I just looked it and said, right, yeah, that, that'll do, lengthwise. It's a nice um, rectangular shape rather than a square. That should be fine for a baby blanket. And I decided to stop. And um, my yarn was running out, so I thought, okay, time to start doing the edge now. So I did, um, I started by doing a single, a double, sorry, double crochet edging. And I thought, that doesn't quite look like it's an edge. So then I thought I would do a slip stitch edge, and that's what I've done. So I've done a slip stitch edge all the way around with um, two chains in the corners, just to kind of make it look like a corner. And that is what it looks like. And I'm really pleased with it. I mean, I didn't didn't occur to me they would be so simple to just do a, a blanket like a baby blanket like this um, and just do a single double crochet and then just do the edging in a slip stitch I was thinking I would have to do like a pattern a shell stitch pattern or something like that but once I got going with it it was just really nice and easy it's quite relaxing to do I enjoyed working it kept my lap warm while I was working watching TV and I, I've enjoyed it I've enjoyed doing it and I actually would like to do another one but I have no one to give it to so yeah so that is um the petunia baby blanket done and I'm pleased with that I just need to weave in the end so I think that oh no I have another crochet project I've been doing a lot of crocheting my last crochet project has been and this isn't the last crochet project I worked on. This is just the one I left till last. It was this Mickey Mouse pillow, which I found on Etsy. Um, my cousin wanted a Mickey Mouse pillow. She sent me a picture of what she wanted. And I found out who it was that sold it. And this is Janet Carrillo from Damn It Janet Let's Crochet. And she came up with this design for a pillow. And... I got going on it and I couldn't put it down and this is what I've ended up with. So I'm really pleased with it, I mean the buttons are a little bit skew if, um, these are not actually buttons, I've done little crochet circles, you have the option to do buttons or, or to just crochet white circles and I crocheted white circles and um, yeah it's a really easy knit, double crochet or single crochet, whatever you want to, is it double or, no it's treble crochet. That's, that's treble crochet. Anyway, it's really nice. I've got my um, stuffing inside it. I know that certain bits of it are not, like the buttons are not particularly even. The ears are not particularly even. But you know what? I'm hoping that will give it that extra um, personal touch for her. And that is what it looks like. I was really pleased with how it turned out. And um, I'm hoping she'll love it too. Not sure what else to say about this particular project. It was, let's see, I used Style Craft yarns for this and I used a, what size needle? It doesn't say what size hook I used. I think I used a size four crochet hook. Let me just check the pattern. I did everything as per the pattern. So the crochet hook was 3.5 millimeter crochet hook for this pattern and um, double crochets which um, is UK um, treble crochet maybe that's where I went wrong or is it it looks the same to me yeah they're treble crochets that's right they call it double we call it in the UK we call it treble in the US they call it double crochets that's right so yeah so that is my Mickey Mouse pillow and I'm hoping that she likes it I do have another finished object that I can't share with you because I've it's a pattern that I'm working on and it's not finalized yet and I think I mentioned it in my last video so yeah my battery is dying I'm gonna have to take a break now before I move on to works in progress sorry about that I had to take a short break because my battery died um I have a couple more finished objects but these are actually sewing um I got hold of a pattern for a project bag online um, I can't remember what I've done with the paper I had it in a bag um, but I think I've looks like I've thrown it away somehow I had a pattern 
with information on how to sew. Ow, something's sticking me in the foot. How to sew a project bag. And I managed to create, which one did I do first? I did this one. I bought some material from my local market and I thought I would buy something Christmassy and um, I came up with this. I'm just emptying it out so I can show you. So it's a box bottom like that. Never done these before. I don't think the lines match. Well, no, they. Uh, I didn't have lines in the bottom because I didn't cut the bottom. I used the fold of the yarn to make the bottom yarn fold of the material to make the bottom anyway so I bought this material um, in the market and picked up picked up some green as well which I've used to line this other bag which I'll show you in a moment and um, I decided to have a go at making a project bag and the bag didn't come out quite as I expected it I made a heap of mistakes um, but I'm pretty pleased with it. So what I did do um, on the actual, the problem with me is that I don't like to follow instructions to the letter. So I'll read a bit and then I think I know what I'm doing. So I just get going on it. And then I look at the pattern and I go, oops, I did that wrong. I was supposed to do whatever. So the pattern actually, um, the material was smaller. The, the, the pattern actually gives you templates to cut out and to work from and I didn't use the templates I just decided I wanted this particular size and I cut it all out on a piece of material and then I just got my sewing machine out and I just went for it kind of vaguely following the pattern and um, I've ended up with a nice drawstring bag which is what I wanted um, but the the way I've done it I've done the box bottom so it's lined on the inside which is great and fine and it fits you know the linings okay I mean my stitching I used the sewing machine to stitch the inside of the lining which wasn't great because it's kind of buckled there in the fold but it's only me that's gonna see it so I didn't really care about that and I bought some interfacing to use to kind of make it stand so that it kind of stands a bit like that you know it's a bit firmer um, and anyway, so the drawstring section is supposed to be separate from the bag. It's supposed to be attached onto the bag um, when you've sewn uh, the body of the bag. When you've sewn the bottom bit, I think. I can't remember how it goes now. But the, the essentially, the drawstring section here is meant to be separately attached. Um, I've done it on this one, which is my second try. So I've got the attachments separate, as you can see there. It's a different, um, you know, attachment. Um, but on this one, I didn't think about that, and I just got sewing, ran away with myself, and then thought, okay, now I need to pull the string through. And then I realised that I'd actually sewn the top band all the way around, so there were no holes. For the drawstrings to go in so I've literally had to cut holes in the fabric sorry my camera turned I've had to cut holes in the fabric because you can probably hopefully see here where the hole is and then I've done a buttonhole band kind of a button, buttonhole stitching by hand around that because it had all been done I had used the same machine to do everything else got to that point and realized oops I need holes for the drawstrings and so um so yeah that didn't quite work but i managed to make the holes i've put the drawstring through i've got it the right way and it pulls the way i like it to pull and i'm pretty pleased with that um it it's got a nice big base so i can put larger size projects in it which i'm pleased about um so the only thing in my mind that didn't quite go to plan was the the um, drawstring band and the inside section didn't quite work out but it's holding my project in here which I will show and explain to you once I go into the whip section and I'm good with that it's doing the job that it was intended to do so I'm pleased with that and that's it there 
the other bag like I just showed you this was my second try and um, for this one I actually followed the pattern so I've got the little handle thing in me here um, I've got the drawstring tabs there I've got a different color lining and it's still got the box bottom the only thing that I wasn't overly happy with on this one was that the the seams on the bottom don't line up so you can see here one bit there and the other seams there but on that side it's a bit closer together um, and that's one thing which I mean with this kind of thing it's all a, a learning curve isn't it it's all about learning um, the seam I had to undo this and redo it at umpteen times because I messed up on so many occasions so my stitching's a little bit loose in parts but the inside looks a lot neater than it did on the other one you can see where I've ripped the stitches out to um, do the turn the bag inside out it's a little bit looser but I'm not actually selling it or anything like that so this is just for my own use so it will do and the stitching a little bit neater um, than the other one in terms of the way I've placed it and of course on this one I'm pleased with the the um, what do you call it the drawstring band I've stitched each end there before I sewed it on and connected it to the body it's a little bit shorter than the body so there are holes there there's the opening so that's what it looks like when it's done and you can see the opening is very visible very easy to connect to put my drawstrings in and it works the issue I have with this one which I realized after I'd finished it and um, was taking photographs of it was that I managed to mix up my materials so I have the stars um, from a bag that I made for my daughter for her PE duffel bag um, I have the stars <laughs> instead of the trees I managed to mix up my materials because I was making two bags at the same time um, one for her and my little project bag and I must have cut out two of these little bands and um, picked up the wrong one when it went to stitching it in <laughs> so it's um, I suppose as Ali would say Ali from Little Drops of Wonderful would say it's one of my dodgy bags this is a dodgy bag but I like it it's more or less the same kind of size as this one this is what I was aiming for which is the, the pearl and plum bag that I won in a giveaway I was aiming for this kind of bag um, this one's got a pocket on the inside which I didn't do but I may try on my next attempt and then this one is just ordinary um, but um, I was quite pleased the base on this one's more square as well whereas my one is a little bit more narrow but you know it, it's close um, I realized that I like that kind of bag with the drawstring pulling like that I like the feel of that I like pulling the drawstring anyway so those are the two bags I made I can't show you the one that I made for my daughter because she's taken that one um, off with her to use she's left that at school and um, so I can't show you that one but if you're interested you can I think I put a picture on Instagram of that duffel bag PE bag it is so you can check out that little effort there so those I think that now is all of my finished objects those are all of my finished objects so now let's go on to works in progress so for works in progress I have a few things I have in this bag I have a project that I'm working on um, which is a sock pattern and I'm using this beautiful gobstopper yarn this is all I can show you because the pattern is still not final um, and I'm using this gobstopper yarn this is not by her where is it find the label I'm using two yarns so I'm using berry lips by woolly mama um, yarns this is hers berry lips which is a four ply um, superwash merino and nylon base and I love that so I'm using that for the cuff then I am using let me try not to get all of these tangled up 
the Gobstopper yarn, which is a Superwash Merino and Nylon and Stellina. This is for my, these are for Strictly socks. So it's a 75% Superwash Merino, 20% Nylon, 5% Stellina. And these, this is from the company Somerset Yarns. And it's such a beautiful, beautiful colour way. There it is. Hopefully you can see the sparkle in that. Look at that. How nice and sparkly are they? And I love the way they're knitting up. And I can't show you them yet because, like I said, I'm working on a pair of um, socks in a pattern which I'm designing and it's not yet ready for publishing. So I can't really show you that. But it won't be long, hopefully. Um, I've got to find some test knitters to test knit the pattern for me. So if you're interested in test knitting a pair of socks, um, let me know in the comment section or um, on my on the Ravelry group and um, I can figure something out for those. I also need test knitters for a hat, hat pattern, which is very similar to the sock pattern. So let me know if you're interested in test knitting for a hat um, and a pair of socks. So that's that. So, the next thing is, just give me one moment. Sorry about that, lots of interruptions today. Um, the next work in progress I have to show you is a new one, actually. I'm gonna show you the new one. So I started work on this, <coughs> excuse me, Rainbow Ripple Baby Blanket. I saw this on, I think it's McCarty, Karen from McCarty's, what's the name of her podcast? I can't remember the name of her podcast. I'll put um, her name across the screen um, once I find it. But her name's Karen and she has a podcast that she does. Is it Little Wonderfully Handmade or something like that? I'll, I'll put the name across the screen. Um, she did a ripple blanket and I thought I would love to give that a try. It looks like something fun to do and it's crochet, which I hadn't done for a while. So I picked up the um, crochet hook and I decided to have a go at this blanket. I'm not quite sure who it's going to yet, but I really enjoy working on it. And let me just um, mind, I, might, I think I need to put a stitch minder in. Just give me a second um, so I don't lose that. I have got quite a long way with this. So this is what it's looking like. Very big at the moment, look at that. It's huge. I'm loving working this. I'm really enjoying working this. I am on the white section at the moment so i'm using what yarn was this i thought i was using all style craft yarns for this i've got um this is not style craft this is james c brett yarn this is a james c brett yarn and then the rest are style craft so this is lipstick by style craft this one is what is it called boysenberry and then this one is remember what it's called now check out my Ravelry project page for this if you want to know the exact colors um, but I know these two I think are James C Brett yarns because um, they're, they're the bright ones and then these ones are style craft the last three I have one more color that I think I'm gonna add to this before I decide to call it a day and I've left it downstairs so I can't show you that it's gonna be a blue the next color um, but that is where I am with it. So you start from the middle and work outwards. And it's a very easy um, pattern repeat, very memorable. It's not difficult at all. It's all um, double crochets or um, UK, hang on, UK treble crochet, US double crochet. And it's very easy, very, very easy to do. Um, I think a beginner, I'm a beginner, so I'd say a beginner can do this. And I'm really liking it. I mean, it's got that nice shape. Once it's finished, I think it ends with the white colour. Um, but at the moment, I'm going just going round and round with the, with the five rows of each colour. And you can do whatever variations you want. Um, pattern's pretty easy to read. And I'm loving it. Um, so yeah, I'm not sure if I'm going to do another one because I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with this one, but I do like it. I'm thinking that this can be a baby blanket, but um, I think one more row of one color, and then that's like huge for a baby blanket. If I 
go any bigger than that, I think it will just be a lap blanket or a lap, lap gan, is that what they call them? Um, so yeah, so I'm really enjoying this one. I'm working on this one currently because I've just finished up the other baby blanket. So that's that work in progress. I have the other blanket I was working on was the, um, what do you call it, the memory blanket. I haven't really done a lot on this one. I've kind of lost, run out of steam on this. So this is the memory blanket. I'll insert a picture of what it looks like. Um, all like so you can see the whole thing it's very difficult to show the whole thing but this is what it looks like at the moment uh which is the i think that's the bottom corner so this is the way it should look that's the bottom corner and this is where i am i think i'm going to stop this at some point i'm not quite sure how to finish it whether i should knit a board around the edge um across the top or crochet a border not quite sure how to end this project um and then what to do with it afterwards because it could be a rug it could just be a baby blanket not quite sure but that's where I'm at with that one I've kind of run out of steam on this one and I'm more interested in doing the crochet so yeah so those are my works in progress I've got one more work in progress actually um, just give me one second okay so I think I've got one more work in progress um, to show you and that is the Herky Locatelli um, cardigan I decided to start the long line cardigan I think I started this after the last video and this is what it looks like it's a paid for pattern on Ravelry and I just felt like I'd like to try a long length cardigan in a lighter weight because at the moment um, my projects my finished jumpers and cardigans have been chunky weight and um, double knit and I thought I would try a project that is fingering weight yarn. So it's the Hokey Locatelli long line cardigan. And um, I've chosen a yarn from Woolly Mama Yarns again. And this one is Midnight. And it's a four ply yarn. And it's a superwash, 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. There we go. And it looks like this. And I absolutely love the colour. It's a beautiful blue, purple kind of colour. And it just is stunning. And I've knitted a little bit of this. This pattern requires concentration. I've made a mistake. I'm, let me just show you how far I am. I'm just doing the top, the collar at the moment. And or the shoulders actually it's the shoulders I'm doing and I've made so many mistakes I've ripped it back so many times and I decided to put it down and come back to it because I just kept making mistakes I couldn't get my head around certain things so I've put markers in um, I've got my markers in place I'm not sure if you'll be able to see where it's dividing for the shoulders here and then um, I'm not sure what yeah that's the back I guess so this would be it would be that way up and I'm guessing that the collar goes like that and then you've got the shoulders and the back um, but it's taken me a long time because it's fingering weight and because you really I really need to concentrate um, when I'm doing this sorry I thought I heard the phone then I need to concentrate when I'm doing this so um, it takes a little bit longer and I haven't worked on it for a good couple of weeks because I've been doing smaller projects but you can see I don't know if you can, I can see purples and different blues in this. I'm not sure it's really picking up on the camera, but I'm loving that. I've got my little jumper stitch marker on there. A couple of different stitch markers. Um, but yeah, that is how far I've got with that. I need to pick this up again, but I need, the, I need to have peace and quiet so I can concentrate on the stitches and um, make sure I get it right because I don't want to mess up right at the very beginning after that I think it looks like it's pretty plain sailing um, it's a pretty straightforward cardigan so you know I think that's probably the only technical bit and it's top down 
so we shall see how I get on with that I've got now that I've got one cardigan off the needles and I've got some bigger things off the needles and I'm just working on small things this is going to be my big project that I'm um, big size project that I'm working on and I will just concentrate on this for a while and um, not do so many different pieces until I get comfortable with the pattern so those are all my works in progress I have a couple of bits of yarn to share with you I think that's about it that I've got incoming so let's move over to incoming and for my incoming section I have um, some yarn I showed the blanket earlier the baby blanket um, with the Bernat yarn that was incoming yarn. I managed to finish that up pretty, pretty quickly because it's a super bulky weight and it works up very fast. So I've done that. I picked up this opal style yarn in the colour. I don't even know what colour it is. This is the colour. <laughs> I like the look of this. I th thought it's a really nice blue colour. It would be nice for a hat is what I was thinking. That would make a nice hat. That's what it looks like in a sock. This is 100 grams. So I could get a pair of socks out of this or I could get quite a few, you know, maybe two or three hats out of this. So we shall see. But I thought that that might be nice for a hat for the male members of my family. And also I picked up another ball of Drops Delight print. This time it's in the grey colourway. And I thought this would look really nice in a hat as well or a scarf or even socks. Um, not quite sure what I'm going to do with this. I might try and make... I only bought one ball, actually, so maybe I was intending to buy a hat, to make a hat, because um, that would be easy, and possibly a pair of um, mittens, fingerless mitts or something. Um, but, yeah, that is my incoming. So those are my incoming yarn bits. I haven't bought any new patterns. I've been trying not to spend so much money, Um on yarn because it's coming up to Christmas and um, not only am I making stuff for people but I'm going to be trying to buy bits and pieces as well so I need to kind of curb my spending um, that is about it I think I've told you about the knit along that I've done that I've um, started so do check that out in the Ravelry group don't forget I will leave my um, information in the description box below so you can check out everything I've talked about you can go and visit the project page for more information and also um, in the Ravelry group don't forget the knit along the winter warmers knit along um, that you can participate in and that ends in February so I think that's about it oh I want to say a big thank you to um, Yolanda from Happy Knits for shouting me out on her podcast I really in I was really surprised by that and um, very grateful for her um, letting people know about my channel. So thank you, Yolanda um, and Jordan, by the way. I enjoy their channel. If you're interested, go and check out their channel as well because they've got quite a nice channel with lots of variety in their podcast. I enjoy watching them. Um, I'm trying to think who else I've been watching lately. I haven't been... I've been trying to catch up with various different people, so... I haven't actually made a note of who I've been watching, but I have been watching quite a few. I like to watch um, the the Yarn Baths, I think they're called, and they upload monthly. I always watch Pen Hook and Needles channel. They upload weekly. Um, who else do I watch? Um, Nadira Tani. I love watching her channel. She um, she shows a variety of skills. And she has some words of wisdom um, that she likes to share with people. And she's such a caring, thoughtful person. And I really enjoy watching her video podcast. I've only just started watching, I think it's Hey Brown Berry. She's an interesting one to watch. I haven't had an opportunity yet to sit and watch her video straight through from beginning to end. So I watch like snippets, put it down and then come back and watch again, which is what I tend to do with a lot of videos because they're quite long. Um, so I have to kind of break it down and watch them in sections and not all in one chunk. Um, I think a lot of you do that. So, I mean, it's not a problem. It just means that I've got a little bit of a disjointed um, 
view of the podcast so yeah I have to sometimes re-watch again um, but I love picking up patterns from the from everybody's podcast the patterns that they share you know it's nice to see what you do and um, kind of get some ideas for what I'd like to knit up for myself or crochet or sew or whatever and don't forget Ali um, from Little Drops of Wonderful she's got a knit along the Strictly um, knit along Strictly Socks is it Strictly Socks 2018 something like that um, she's got a knit along going on at the moment which is great fun and I'm enjoying participating in that because I love watching Strictly at the moment um, Strictly Come Dancing that is and yeah um, I'm going to try and I think I'm going to cut this short now because this video has probably gone on for quite a long time because I've had so many finished objects to share with you and everything else because it's been that long it's been over a month and all I've been doing is a lot of knitting a lot of crocheting um, and just trying to generally keep myself busy um, but yeah that is it trying to get prepared for Christmas um, I will probably see you now I'm not sure I might have an opportunity to upload in December but we shall see I'm not going to promise anything but I will try my best to try and upload um, an update video in December um, probably before Christmas so um, yeah so do look out for that um, if you don't want to just keep checking then subscribe and then click on the notifications bell so then um, YouTube will just let you know when I've uploaded a video so you don't have to keep checking back you can just be notified by um, message by YouTube when I've uploaded saves a lot of time um, but yeah that is it I'm gonna leave it there thank you so much for watching I hope you have enjoyed hearing and seeing what I've been working on um, do give me some thumbs up if you have enjoyed so that I know that you've enjoyed or leave some comments in the description box below or over on the Ravelry group so that I know that you're enjoying my content um, and you know you're, you're just basically enjoying seeing what I've been doing um, but yeah that is it for me thank you very very much for watching I hope you have a lovely rest of your day and I will see you in about a month's time. Bye for now.